Heart disease is the world's biggest killer and it's only getting worse, but there's a safe, easy and ridiculously cheap way to slash our risks. A brand new study has reinforced how effective it can be, and I'll explain why I take it, even though I'm young and healthy. And if you want weekly health research summaries and health strategies that I share with my patients, sign up using the link in the pinned comment. Let's start with the study. Researchers were curious about the way that doctors like myself usually treat heart disease. So when someone's had a heart attack, the clinical guidelines say that we need to get their LDL cholesterol levels lowered as much as possible. We've found that this is one of the best things that we can do to reduce that patient's odds of having another heart attack and other complications. But the standard guidelines take a somewhat surprising approach. In addition to diet and exercise, they advise starting someone out on high-dose statin therapy and then moving to combination therapy if statins alone don't lower their LDL cholesterol levels enough. And combination therapy just means adding another type of medication alongside statins to get a stronger effect. This is why the approach is surprising. We know that combination therapy after a heart attack achieves lower LDL cholesterol levels and better health outcomes than statins alone. And more than 80% of patients end up needing to move to combination therapy to reach these targets. So the researchers wondered this, what would happen if we just started patients on combination therapy right after they'd had a heart attack, instead of waiting to see if statins alone were enough? In other words, if we know that something helps, and most people are going to end up needing it anyway, could we see better outcomes if we just start using it right away, instead of waiting? The researchers decided to find out. They divided a huge population of people who'd already had a heart attack in Sweden into three groups based on the medications that they took. One had combination therapy early, one added it later, and one group just stuck with statins. They followed patients for an average of four years and measured things like heart attacks and strokes. And here is what they found. Compared to the early combination therapy group, the group that started later had a 64% higher risk of death from heart disease, and the group that just stuck with statins alone had a sobering 83% higher risk. So the straightforward answer to their question is pretty clear. Starting patients on early combination therapy can save a lot of lives and deliver better health outcomes overall. Now, this study was focused on those who'd already had a heart attack, but there's a much broader lesson here that we should all be paying attention to, and it's changed how I personally approach my heart health. So I'm going to explain this in a moment. First, though, I need to address some pushback that often comes up whenever I talk about cholesterol. As a clinician, I'm always having to respond to this objection that my patients always hear online from health influencers. It goes like this, high LDL cholesterol isn't actually a problem, it's just a myth created by companies who want to sell medications. And sometimes people online also argue that it's actually low cholesterol that's most dangerous to our health. And supporters of the story will point to studies like this one, which includes this graph showing the relationship between LDL cholesterol and all-cause mortality. The higher risks are seen with lower LDL levels. So what's going on here? Is there really some grand conspiracy on the part of doctors and pharmaceutical companies to push unnecessary medications, bearing in mind that statins and azetamibe are off-patent and ridiculously cheap anyway? Well, the first thing to notice is that we see this U-shaped pattern in a lot of areas related to health. A meta-analysis on body mass index in older adults, for instance, has a chart just like this one for cholesterol. Are we really to believe that to be healthy, we should aim to be overweight? It's the same pattern for blood pressure. If there's a conspiracy, it seems to show up everywhere in medicine, but the actual explanation of this pattern has nothing to do with conspiracies or deception. Here's what's really going on. People who fall into the very low end for metrics like cholesterol, body mass index and blood pressure often fall into two categories, the elderly and the chronically ill. In old age, we start to see a lot of health problems that can impact these metrics. Think of body mass index, for instance. When we reach advanced age, sometimes our appetite decreases. We eat less, so our weight comes down. So we're going to see much lower body mass index levels, and at this age, we're also going to see much higher mortality rates. A similar logic applies to the chronically ill. Very low cholesterol levels can be caused by liver disease and cancer, for instance, and these all raise mortality levels at the same time. But when studies are done carefully to correct for these confounding factors, like old age and chronic disease that distort the results, we tend to see a different picture. So consider this example. A large cohort study looked at over 40,000 patients and overall mortality. The association initially looks like this. Notice the high death risk at the left side of the graph where the non-HDL cholesterol levels are lowest. Now look at the results after adjusting for age, malnutrition, and a number of other markers of poor health. The U-shaped association disappears, and we've now got a clear relationship between higher levels of cholesterol and greater mortality risks. 
But what we've looked at so far are observational studies. We want to widen our gaze to make sure that we aren't missing anything or being led astray. So when we have a look at this review of over 200 studies, including randomized controlled trials, involving more than 2 million people, we still see a consistent pattern. Higher amounts of LDL cholesterol in the blood correlate with higher rates of heart disease. The link is so strong that the study authors concluded that the evidence clearly shows that LDL causes heart disease. But what about if you're otherwise healthy? You'll hear online that if we're a perfect weight, we don't have diabetes or issues with insulin sensitivity, and our blood pressure is perfect, then we don't need to worry about blood cholesterol levels. Well, an important study called the PISA study answers this question. We can see that blockages in our arteries can still develop if LDL cholesterol is above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, even if all other risk factors, such as insulin resistance, are perfect. And this point is timely since a new study has been making the rounds on social media. It looked at so-called lean mass hyperresponders. So these are people who are very healthy, but they've got sky-high LDL cholesterol levels because they're on an ultra-low-carb diet, or the keto diet, for example. Now, these people, again, were extremely healthy except for their sky-high LDL cholesterol levels. And as expected, these participants saw rapid plaque progression in their blood vessels. And I covered this study in a separate video because there's so much misinformation about it and it's linked in the pinned comment. Now, personally, I want to lower my risks of dying from heart disease as much as possible, especially when there's some safe and highly effective strategies that we can use. Which brings us to the lesson that we can draw from this new study that this video began with. So let me explain the lesson and the way that I've personally responded and the lessons that you might take for your own health. Let me start by emphasizing something critical. When it comes to improving health outcomes, getting exercise and diet right are a must. These are two incredibly powerful levers that we can pull to modify our risks. Some elements of our diet, like fiber for instance, can be particularly helpful, and that's why I included psyllium husk in microvitamin plus powder. But just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. But what I see in the clinic is that diet and exercise by themselves are often not enough for us to hit these aggressive LDL cholesterol targets. So the target that I ideally want is to have a level below 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter. And that's when we talk about low-dose statin therapy. This is the first-line medication to help bring down our levels. But many YouTube channels and blogs say that statins cause dementia. Now this concern has been conclusively disproven in many clinical trials. The latest clinical guidelines actually suggest the use of statins to reduce dementia risks. Statins also don't affect testosterone levels, and muscle pains are rare, about 1 to 2 in every 100 patients. And those risks are even lower if we stick to low-dose therapy, which is what I use in the clinic. Low doses are able to give us about 70% of the LDL cholesterol-lowering effect that we see with a high dose, but the bonus is that we're much less likely to get side effects if we use low-dose therapy. But what if we need to push our levels even lower. Well, in the clinic, I usually turn to azetamibe at this point. It's a very well-tolerated medication. Only a small minority of patients experience some tummy upset, and this usually resolves with time. And it was that medication that was used in combination therapy and the study that we looked at at the start of this video. It has a different mechanism of action to statins. Put simply, statins reduce how much cholesterol our liver makes and azetamibe works by telling our gut to not absorb as much cholesterol. So since they work on two different pathways, they work really well together to overall lower our cholesterol levels. A recent meta-analysis showed that combination therapy lowers blood cholesterol levels more and is better tolerated compared to using high-dose statins alone. With that context in mind, here's the lesson from the new study that we began with. Heart disease is the result of accumulative processes and damage that slowly builds up in our arteries, so starting early pays massive dividends in the long run. Look at this chart from the study. The green line is the early combination therapy group, the blue line is the late combination group, and the red line just had statins. At first, there's no difference, but the benefits widen as time goes on. There's no reason to wait until we've had a heart attack. We can start tapping into these accumulative benefits by starting early, and it's also never too late to start. For example, an analysis of a large cohort study in the UK looked at those with no previous heart disease who used statins as a preventative measure. Researchers found that the benefits they build up over a lifetime. In light of this, I personally take a low-dose statin called Privastatin 20mg at night, and I've actually got it here to show you. Now, this is a recent change because I used to take Resuvastatin 5mg, and I've got a video coming out shortly to explain why I made that change. But Privastatin in the United States, from costsplusdrugs.com, it's available for $7.55 for a three-month script, so that's only $2.52 per month, which is ridiculously cheap. 
And this is what sometimes surprises people. I also take azetamibe 10 milligrams, which again, I've got here to show you. And I do that because I want that combination therapy. Just by using pravastatin or rosuvastatin at the lower doses, I wasn't quite reaching the targets that I wanted. But adding in azetamibe allowed me to get to that target. And it's only $9.49 for a three-month script. So $3.16 per month. But hopefully you can see my logic. I want to keep my LDL cholesterol levels low and I want to start now when I'm young so I can prevent buildup of plaque in my arteries. Remember, heart disease is still the world's number one killer. So if I can take two cheap and safe medications that will minimize my risks, for me, it's a no-brainer. But back to the new study on so-called lean mass hyperresponders, which has created a firestorm online. I highly recommend that you check out this next video here so that you aren't led astray by misleading headlines and conclusions.